Hey, what's up? It's Wick for Xiaomi Fi, back with yet another episode of What is Xiaomi Doing? This episode is actually almost all Xiaomi Amija products, a lot of exciting new smart home products, and I'm super excited about this one, so uh, let's go! Xiaomi launched some new phones, starting with the Xiaomi Play. This budget phone comes with a really small front-facing notch, making this 5.8 screen feel rather large. It comes with the relatively unknown but pretty impressive MediaTek P35 8-core processor, 4 gigs of RAM, and 64 gigs of internal storage. It's got a 3000 mAh battery, and on the back you'll find a fingerprint scanner and a 12 megapixel dual lens camera. The 8 megapixel front-facing camera also has all the beauty functions that we're kind of used to seeing, but it's also got a face unlock feature. The Xiaomi Mi Play comes in blue, red and black and comes in for only 1100 RMB in China, which is roughly 160 US dollars or 140 euros, making this a very well priced mid-tier smartphone. On to the Redmi Note 7. The Redmi Note 7 comes with a Snapdragon 660, 8 core processor, 3, 4 or 6 gigs of RAM and 32 or 64 gigs of internal storage. It comes with an insane 48 megapixel camera setup with its dual camera on the back Back, and that is where you also find the fingerprint scanner and it has a front facing camera in the same type of drop notch as we've just seen on the Mi Plate. So it seems Xiaomi is really ditching the bigger notch this year. The Redmi comes with a 6.3 inch screen and it's got an all glass body made of Gorilla Glass 5. It comes with a really decent 4000 mAh battery, USB-C and it supports quick charge 4.0. The Redmi Note 7 comes in black, blue or this pinkish with a pretty cool gradient and it was just released in China coming in for only 999 RMB for the entry level model up to 1400 RMB for the 6 gigs RAM and 64 gig storage model which is a price range of about 150 to 210 US dollars for this quite impressive mid-tier level smartphone. Next up is this new 75 inch 4K Mi TV. This huge TV has a really small but quite nice looking bevel. It comes with a Cortex A53 64 bit quad core processor, 2 gigs of RAM and 8 gigs of internal storage. It comes with 3 HDMI ports, one of which supporting the ARC audio protocol, 2 USB ports, SP diff audio out, a regular TV AV in and an Ethernet port which might be good for streaming 4K content. It's got Bluetooth and and built-in Wi-Fi supporting both 2.4 and 5 gigahertz networks. Its stereo 8 watt built-in speakers are powered by Dolby and it comes with the Mi TV operating system with that nice looking patch wall interface and it comes with the voice assisted remote controller. The 75 inch 4K TV comes in for 6000 RMB which is about $1200 or a little over 1000 euros making it not the cheapest in their line of TVs but then again at 75 inch it's really huge. Next Next up is this really cool looking Xiaomi Media photo printer. This pretty small photo printer can print high resolution photos up to 300 dots per inch. It seems to be able to print water resistant photos including passport portraits and it seems to only print wirelessly over Bluetooth 4.0 or Wi-Fi allowing you to easily print photos from your phone or computer which is actually kind of nice. It prints photos in four steps, each step printing on a new color. So it first prints the yellow, then the red, then the blue. And the cartridges are capable of printing about 40 photos. It works with Xiaomi's photo paper add-ons, which are available in a pack of 40 sheets. And these come including a new ink cartridge. These refills are actually really cheap, as you can get these in China for only 59 RMB, or about 8.5 US dollars, or 7.5 euros for 40 photos, including a cartridge. The Xiaomi photo printer came out in China for only 4.99 RMB, which is about 73 US dollars or 64 euros, making this a really attractively priced printer. I will be doing a video about it as soon as I can get my hands on it, but they were sold out in a split second, so I do hope to get one as soon as possible. Next up is the Mija Desk Lamp Pro. This desk lamp is the follow-up on their popular award-winning desk lights and it's got a much wider and brighter light source. 
Just like the Media Desk Light, it can be controlled from the feed of the light where you can dim or increase the brightness and set the color of the light from 2500K to almost 5000K. The Desk Lamp Pro can be adjusted in angle, a lot more flexible than its predecessor, and the light seems to be much more diffused as well. It supports Apple HomeKit as well as Xiaoi voice integration from day one as well, which is kind of cool. And to me, it seems like a really good upgrade from the original Media Desk Lamp. It came in the store in China for 349 RMB, which is about $50 or 45 euros at the moment. Next up, we saw this Yeelight Qi Charger Nightlight combination. This small nightlight has a 2700K warm light color, which is a detachable light. It's got a 10 watt Qi Charger to charge your phone, and it just looks kind of cool. It's only 22 by 8 centimeters, and it seems the perfect size to be placed next to your bed. It's got a 10 watt charger that is capable of charging most phones from the iPhones, Samsung phones and Xiaomi phones supporting Qi wireless charging. From the images, it seems to be powered over micro USB and that's about it. It came in the Yopin store in China for only 99 RMB, which is about 15 US dollars or about 12 and a half euros. Next up, we saw this Yeelight ceiling fan with built-in heater and ventilation. The ceiling light has a dimmable light that can be set in brightness, but it doesn't seem possible to change the U though. It's got a built-in heater and ventilation system that can be used to warm up your bathroom, as well as uh, using it to ventilate after a shower or bath. It can heat up to 15 degrees in just a matter of three minutes, and it's suitable for areas up to 240 cubic meters. It's got IPX2 and IPX4 water resistant certifications, which seems like a good thing to have in the bathroom. The ceiling light heater fan combination comes with Wi-Fi and Bluetooth to be controlled from the Mi Home app and the Yeelight app, and it also comes with a wireless switch that can be taken from its wall mount to control from your bath, for example. The Yeelight ceiling fan came out in crowdfunding in the Xiaomi Yopin app for 599 RMB, which translates to about 88 US dollars or 77 euros. It seems to start shipping around March, so it will be a little while before we see these in store. Next up, Xiaomi also came out with a similar type of bathroom light with heater and ventilation system. This one has pretty much the exact same dimensions as the Yeelight ceiling light, but it's slightly less deep. In terms of functionality, it's quite similar. You can set the lighting, you can set the fan speed, the ventilation, and the heating settings, all from the wireless switch. The Xiaomi ceiling light only works with the Xiaomi app as of right now, but it is expected to be supported by the Xiaomi Mi Home app in a little while as well. For some reason, the power connection on the Xiaomi does seem to have a ground, whereas the Yeelight doesn't, so that's kind of good, I guess. It also comes with the needed accessories for air outlets, so it seems to be a full and complete set. The Xiaomi ceiling light, heater, and air ventilation system came in for 499 RMB in the Yopin store, which is 100 RMB less than the Yeelight one, making this one about 73 US dollars or 64 euros at the moment. Next up was the new version of the Xiaoi speaker. This Xiaoi HD speaker has put focus on better audio quality and seems to look more like a home speaker to play music over. It's got 360 degree sound projection created by an array of four 2.2 inch speaker drivers and a much bigger 4 inch driver for bass. It comes with a DSP processor for sound enhancement and being 15 by 23 centimeters and being 2.2 kilograms it should be much more robust speaker that should produce some pretty good sound. The Shell iSpeaker HD connects over 2.4 and 5 GHz networks, which is pretty rare for Xiaomi products, but a very welcome change. It also has Bluetooth 4.1 for streaming sound from any other Bluetooth device. I'm just a little bit disappointed to see it's not Bluetooth 5. It also comes with a 6 microphone array that is used for voice control, but obviously the sound has been the biggest improvement as Xiaomi has kept on updating their Xiaoi speakers over the last year and kept improving its AI functionality. Unfortunately, the smart speaker functionality is still in Mandarin only and I really hope to one day see English being supported by these speakers as well. I was uh, personally already really impressed with the original Xiao Ai speaker last year. Its sound was really impressive for the size and build of the speaker, so I am very sure that this one won't be disappointing. They came in light and dark gray in the Xiaomi store for 599 RMB, which is about 88 US dollars or 77 euros. 
Next up, we've seen a new version of the Xiaomi Laser Projector. This super popular laser projector now supports 4K video and HDR images. It's got the same short focal length, allowing you to place it anywhere between 5 and 50 centimeters away from your wall, and it's capable of projecting images from 2 meters up to 3.8 meters in size, which is huge. It comes with a laser that is capable of projecting 25,000 hours. It comes with Mi TV, built-in Dolby Audio, 2 gig of RAM, 16 gigs of internal storage, and a good amount of ports, including three HDMI ports, a USB 3 port, 3.5 millimeter audio in, and a 3.5 millimeter audio out, SPDIF optical audio out, and an Ethernet port. It has a built-in Wi-Fi, and it seems to have Bluetooth as well to connect things like a game controller, for example. The 4K projector also comes with the remote control that supports voice control, but for now, this only comes fully in Mandarin as this uh, laser projector is only released in China for now. The Xiaomi 4K projector came out for 15,000 RMB, which is about 2200 US dollars or a little less than 2000 euros, making it a bit more pricey at launch than its predecessor. Next up is the crowdfunding campaign for the all new Akara curd motor. Yes, Akara already had that really cool curtain motor, but this one does not have to be wired as it comes with a detachable, rechargeable 3000 milliamp lithium battery. The maximum pull weight of the motor is 50 kilograms, just like their other model, but the battery life will be affected on heavier curtains. If the pull weight is about 10 kilograms, the battery will last about six months based on an average use of four times per day, which is actually quite impressive. If preferred, you could also choose to use the curtain motor plugged in a wall socket, so it does not require you to uh, hardwire it like the other model. The curtain motor connects over Zigbee, so you will need to pair it with one of the Xiaomi or Akara gateway hubs in order to set it up. And just like their previous generation curtain controller, it works with the DT82 curtain tracks, which allow you to pull the curtains to one side or two sides depending on the type of tracks that you choose. This one looks uh, very versatile as it works with the battery and a power outlet. It obviously works with Xiao Ai Voice Assistant, and I suspect it will be supported with Apple HomeKit when you pair it with the Akara Hub with HomeKit support. It came out in crowdfunding in the Yopin store for only 599 RMB, which is about 88 US dollars or 77 euros, but after the crowdfunding, they will go for 999 RMB, which is about 147 or 128 euros. The Akara Curtain Motor B1 starts shipping halfway March, and you can obviously expect me to do a video about this one as it starts shipping. Next up is the Mijia washing machine and dryer combination. This laundry machine can actually handle up to 10 kilograms of laundry and it comes in white. And yes, it's got a Mijia logo. This one also has a class one energy label as with the Viomi ones that we've seen in last episode. The Mijia laundry and dryer combination has built-in Wi-Fi, allowing you to control it from the Mi Home app. And it's got a touch display on the front as well. I personally like the touch display on the Viomi ones a little bit more, but the looks of this one with that big black tinted window is really nice though. The Mijia laundry machine with dryer came out for 19.99 RMB, but it is in store now for 2,500 RMB, which is about 370 US dollars or 320 euros, making it a little bit cheaper than the Viomi one that I bought last month. And then next up is this Mijia heater. The heater looks quite a bit like the Smart Me heater that we've seen last month, but it is a little bit different. It can heat up rooms of around uh, 15 square meters and being uh, 73 by 50 centimeters it is a little bit larger than the smart me heater. It has input buttons on the side to control the temperature and the timer settings and it seems to heat anywhere in between 20 and 32 degrees celsius very similar to the smart me heater that we've seen last month. It can also be controlled and automated from the Mi Home app as well. The Mija heater comes in the store for only 349 RMB, which is about 50 US dollars or 45 euros. It is not officially launched and it will be on sale from the 25th of February. Which one do you personally like better in terms of design? The new Mija heater or the Smart Me heater? Next up is a new version of the Xiaomi wireless earphones. These all new in-ears look a lot like the in-ears from the fruity brand that we all compare them with. 
They come with a charging carrying case, which comes with a USB-C input and it supports quick charge, which is nice to see. The charging carrying case is able to fully charge the earphones twice and they should be fully charged in about an hour. The Mi Headset Air should have much better audio quality than the Air Dots, of which I had a not so favorable review a little while ago. And they do look fairly comfortable and being only 5.8 grams, they are pretty lightweight as well. They have a built-in microphone for voice calls, some voice assist, they've got infrared sensors to detect if you're wearing them, and also some sort of noise reduction built in as well. I couldn't find the exact Bluetooth version that it supports, but seeing it supports a range of up to 10 meters, I expect this to be Bluetooth 4.1 or 4.2. I'm curious to try these out, as I suspect I might be a little bit more impressed with these than the Air Dots. They came out in white, but as they show many black ones in the pictures, I do expect they will release a black version of them in the near future, probably. They came out in the Yopin store for 399 RMB, making them about 60 US dollars or 51 euros, so they are a little bit more expensive than the Air Dots. Xiaomi also recently released two different models of Bluetooth caller headsets, one for 299 RMB and one for 170 RMB. I've gotten the Youth Edition, of which I will post a review very soon, and I can say that so far I really like like them a lot, so stay tuned for more on those. Next we've got one that got me really excited, the Low Free New Year Special Edition set. This Low Free set comes with their dot keyboard and calculator and it also includes this mouse, an arm resting pad, their Low Free lamp and Bluetooth speaker, all in this exclusive black finishing, which looks really cool. It comes in this gift set, which in addition also includes this low free bag. I've talked about their dot keyboard and calculator in the latest episode of what is Xiaomi doing, but this whole set just looks really good in black. Especially if you got a vintage analog camera and keep your coffee beans on your rustic looking table and you drink a whiskey while looking at how your stock is doing, this retro looking set would look awesome on your desk. The whole set came in for about 2000 RMB, which is roughly 300 US dollars or about 260 euros. But that will give you this pretty badass looking set. So let's keep on going with cool products as this month we've seen the crowdfunding campaign for this water saving motion sensor for your water tap. This motion sensor can be easily attached to your water tap and it will give you water when you put your hands next to it. It looks fairly easy to install, but it does require you to keep your tap open for it to work the way it's intended. It's got two motion sensors. There's one on the side that detects movement as close as 10 centimeters and one on the bottom that will work from 15 centimeters. It comes with mounts for the most types of water tap fittings. I don't know exactly what type of battery that it has to work, but I will find out soon as you know you can expect a video about this one. It came out in the crowdfunding for only 79 RMB, which is a little less than 12 US dollars or a little over 10 euros, which makes it no surprise they've sold close to 60,000 units during the crowdfunding campaign. Next up we saw the all new Xiaomi Mija pressure cooker. On top it's also got a really nice looking OLED display that can indicate cooking time and it can be fully controlled from the Mija app over Wi-Fi. It seems to have pretty much the same dimensions and a very similar look as the Mija rice cookers that they already had out in store and this one looks like a really nice addition to that lineup. It came in store for 600 RMB which is about 88 US dollars or 77 euros right now. And to add even one more to the lineup, Xiaomi released his new 1.6 liters media rice cooker as well. This one has a smaller capacity as their other cookers and it looks really compact. It's got a pretty cool looking LED display on the front and it seems to be just a smaller version in their lineup of rice cookers. Like all the others, it can also be controlled from the Mi Home app where it's got a selection of Chinese recipes to cook as well. This one is not the most power friendly as it's got a class 4 energy label, but it is is fairly cheap as it came in the store for only 199 RMB, which is about 30 US dollars or 26 euros right now. So that's about it for the first What is Xiaomi doing episode of 2019. Which one is your favorite and which ones do you hope I will do a video about? Let me know down here in the comment section and uh, please leave me a little like below this video if you liked it. So show me a little bit of love here. And please subscribe to the channel if you have not done so yet as I'm posting many videos about products from the Xiaomi ecosystem right here on the Xiaomi Fi channel. 
as always, thank you guys for watching, and I hope to see y'all soon. Peace.